as strangers, but now they are part of us. All happiness forever. More frere. For me, Tops. Hurry. Hurry, you go, here. cry. Goodbye, my darling. Missed well. sure you were all right. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> I forgot to water it. Kate, have you thought about what you're going to do now? Oh, I, um, I'm going to put the Clotilde up for sale. After you pay off the bank, there won't be much left. Yeah, but there'll be enough to get me back to the States and to have the baby. Well, where is that? I can't find it. What? The shell that Tom gave me. Look, if you'd like to hang on to the boat. I mean, if it's a matter of covering expenses, will you decide? No. It's just that I don't think that I can sleep in that bed anymore. You know, or uh, look up at the wheel and know that I'm never going to see Tom standing there again. Damn. It's going to be tough on Wesley growing up without a father. Would you consider letting me take him? I'd like to raise him as my son. do all those kind of things, like go to baseball games and, and, and rebuild carburetors and all that kind of stuff? I told you, I'm not going. I know how you feel about Julie, but she's not going to be there. I just want to stay with you. But I don't even know where I'm going to end up. I mean, I, I could end up in, in some tiny little room in the village. Well, that's OK. Look, I'm going to have enough taking care of the baby. I can help you. Right, you and me and the baby. You can sleep on the couch and you can mop the kitchen floor. You can clean up the dirty diapers. You can That's the... fine. Wes, don't you understand that you and I are just going to keep reminding each other of Tom? We were just going to be mourning all the time. You mean you don't want me? Oh. I do. I want you more than anything in the world. It's just that every time I look at you, I see... I see Tom, and I can't handle it. It's tearing me apart. I just don't know what I can do. And I wonder who 
who decorated this room. Must have been someone very clever. It's after three. Every bar ought to have a mirror, so when you reach for a drink, you can take a good look at yourself. Why don't you try to get some sleep? I don't feel like sleeping. I don't feel like drinking. Congratulations. I've been standing here forcing myself to face what I've become. What are you looking for, Julie? Pity? I'm past feeling pity. What do you feel? Disgust. That makes two of us. Look at me. No, really, look at me. What do you see? A woman who is beautiful, who deliberately set out to make herself ugly. Go on. A woman who seems to get some sort of twisted pleasure out of feeling sorry for herself. Who never had the guts to take the blame for her own failures? Exactly. You know, Wesley was right. I did murder Tom. That's what I am, a destroyer. Lady, most of all, what you're destroying is yourself. And if we stay together, I'll end up destroying you. It's not much of a marriage, is it? You should have walked out of me a long time ago. Why didn't you? Because I loved you. Well, let's be honest. There hasn't been any love between us in a long time. I don't even think we like each other anymore. Rudy, I'm leaving. I'm sorry. It's over. You can look on it as a gift. Maybe the first generous thing I've done since we married. Sure. No, I have to see if I can manage without a crutch to lean on. Not the bottle, not you. Is there any way I can help? Yes. Let me go.
Prescott, Julie Prescott. P-R-E-S. Yes, that's right. No, not the Chicago Tribune. I'm a photographer with Life magazine. It should all be down there on my application. Eddie, where does it stipulate I'm paying the legal costs? Say last page. Paragraph uh, two. I must say this has been one of the rare ones. Most clients start out insisting it's all going to be friendly and civilized, and before it's over, you're up to your ankles in blood. Look, you must have a million people working down there at the Pentagon. Surely you can spare me one clerk to get my papers processed? Thank you. I'd appreciate it. Um, I'm sorry. Just one more. It's a quick one. That story you did in Israel on the Six-Day War, those children in the bomb shelter. You're very good. Thank you. Ben, it's Julie. Um, is my stuff on the barbecue at the LBJ Ranch up yet? Oh, good. Okay, great. I'll see you back at the office about three. All right, where were we? The final agreement. Okay, where do I sign? Aren't you going to read it? I take it you have? Yes. Well, then it's fine. It's the way you wanted it. No settlement, no alimony. All right. Okay, uh, here? Bottom line. Anything you want from the house? Furniture, paintings? No, I've taken my books. That's really all I wanted. I decided that was one of the things wrong with our life. Too many possessions. Okay. Oh. Green. Is this it? That's it. I'll make a uh, routine appearance in court to have the judge hand down the decree. But to all intents and purposes, you are divorced. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I have to run. We're trapped here for life. That's the third elevator. It's gone right by. Well, so, uh, how are things in Washington? Fine. Great. My career has taken off like a skyrocket. Really? I'm serving on the Rules and Administration Committee. Sounds impressive. Of course, the chairman makes the really important decisions. Such as? Assigning parking spaces. Well, um, then what do you do? Well, actually, I've handled a number of crucial matters. The kinds of things that shape the destiny of a nation. Why, only last week, I okayed a request from the distinguished senator from Missouri to okay the transfer of five waste paper baskets and an electric pencil sharpener. sons punish their mothers or just mine? Still? Well, he didn't even bother to tell me when he re-enlisted. He's still in Vietnam. But actually, I'm hoping to see him soon. I've been pushing the magazine to send me over there on an assignment, so... What? You really have become quite a dame. Go, 
<laughs> Wes, it's Rudy. Hey, how you doing? I've been meaning the call the last couple of weeks, but uh, things got jammed up. Yeah, sure, that's okay. I know how it is. Listen, I'm in New York. I don't have to be in Washington until tomorrow. I've got an evening free. I, uh, I had an inspiration. Why don't you come on down? Hop the train. I'll clear it with the school. Oh, hey, that'd be beautiful. We can go out to dinner, or maybe take in a movie. Beautiful. Or we just talk. It's been a long time since we talked. I like that. Only, I've got this math exam tomorrow, and I've got to put in a little more studying. You know, polish up. Meaning you haven't cracked a book. Yeah, right. Well, we'll skip it then. I'm oh, sorry. Is anything wrong? You sound, you know, down. No, no, everything's fine. I mean, if it's really important, I'll come. The hell with the exam. No, it's not important. We'll do it some other time. Great. Wesley, take care of yourself. You too. Here is a communication from your mathematics instructor. Do you know what it's about? I got a pretty good idea. I'm a little shaky in math. You're flunking math. Do you understand what that means? Automatic suspension from athletics. You're a good kid, George. A decent boy. Also, you're a natural-born grade-A screw-up. You're one of the best offensive ends I've ever had. You keep playing the way you are now, there'll be half a dozen colleges waiting to grab you. And right now, you're at the point of pouring it all down the drain. I've been trying. I... You know my daughter, Marion? Yes, sir. Hello. Hi. She was an honor student all through school. Straight A's in math. Now, I've explained your situation to her, and she's offered to tutor you. I'll leave it to you two to work out the schedule. Jordash, I'm going out of my way to give you a chance. Make the most of it. All right, Wesley, now, we'll start off with two nights a week. I'll go over your assignments with you, make sure that you understand, give you some extra homework. Wesley, what are you doing? What? Uh, Wesley, I can't go in there. It's OK. Um, all right, now, we'd better review some of the things that you've already had. Uh, we can start with a simple... Hey. With the simple basics. Um, polynomials, variables and quantifiers. You probably need some work on trigonometry and vectors. Yeah. Um, let's see now. Um, we could also brush up on um, rational expressions. Now, those are the um, quotient of two um, and square roots. Now, Wesley, square roots are very, very important. We can't forget those. Um, <laughs> quadratic equations, how to calculate rational We should probably go over additive inverses mm -hmm. and absolute value. Absolute.
Hey, John. Rudy! Hello, Marsh. I've been trying to get in touch with you. I was in New York. Marsh, but you know, I had the strangest experience. For the first time in months, I had a few free hours. I tried to think of someone to spend the evening with, and there wasn't a soul. That's ridiculous. All your friends. Uh, friends? What friends? I don't have time to make friends. Come on, you're just tired. Now listen, that speech LBJ is going to make on television tonight, the words around, he's going to announce that he's not running for re-election. He's not? I don't believe it. I think the man's nuts. Maybe he's just fed up living in a world where he never gets a minute of privacy. Marsh, take a look at them. You know them as well as I do. Most of their personal lives are disasters. What's leading you? There are men here who haven't made love to their wives in 10 years, but they keep their marriages going for their public image. So? I know one senator's kids who are with him so seldom that when their mother says, come see your father, they say, oh, yeah, which channel's he on? When you make it to the top, buddy, it's all worth it. Is it? Well, you're just about to find out. It's a lead pipe sense that the next man in the White House is going to be a Republican. And it's going to be Nixon. What does that mean, that grin? I've got it all staked out for you to be his key speaker in New York State. I'm not interested. You're not what? Marsh, I'm quitting politics. What the hell are you saying? When my term's over, I'm not running for re-election. It's a roll call vote. I've got to go. You've got five minutes. Now, you just listen to me. There's a party organization that worked his tail off to get you into office. Marsh, I'm grateful. Only I put my sweat and blood into it. And you've got the nerve to stand there and tell me you don't give a damn. Oh, Marsh, would you listen to me? I'm trying to tell you I've taken a long, hard look at my life. And I don't like what I see. I don't understand you. What in God's name are you after? I'm not sure. I'm looking for the answer. All I do know is, is that something in my life has got to change. I'm always driving for success. It's always a drive, drive, drive. And when you get there, when you get there and you stand there, it just doesn't match the dream. That's the boat. Rudy. Don't do this to me. Oh, I'm sorry. But I have given all that I have to give. I'm out. All right. Let's have it. What? Your health. What's wrong with it? I don't know. I never did trust that doctor of mine. He's as stupid as a flat iron. What's he treating you for? I don't know. He doesn't tell me anything. Just gives me that medical jargon. Keeps dragging me off to the hospital. Tests, treatments. I think I can make this one. <laughs> you see? Nothing. So. So you're getting out of politics, huh? I want some time for myself. Don't make me laugh. You wouldn't know what to do with it. So you're coming back to DC Enterprises? I doubt it. Of course you are. I need someone to take over. You'll find someone. I want you. It's not what I'm looking for. What are you looking for? I want to relate to people, not pieces of paper. Is that it? Or just an out? Because you know we've got problems. Or didn't you know? Oh, I own stock. I know it's taken a dive. Didn't pay much attention to it. DC shares have fallen before. They always bounce back again. Well, this time it's different. We're in trouble. How bad? Within the past six months, three of our operations have collapsed and have had to be sold off. Competition? Mismanagement? Why? I don't know. I only know the answer is somewhere under that mountain of paper on my desk. But with the doctors dragging me off to hospitals every time I turn around, I've had no time to dig into it. Oh, you're cute. You really are cute. 
What are you talking about? Please, Rudy, as a favor to a sick man, look over those files for me and see what you can come up with. That's what you're asking for, right? I wouldn't dream of it. Rudy? Mm -mm. Just until I get on my feet again. Just this one thing. For old time's sake. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Virginia and Brad are flying up from Texas for a visit. When? Tomorrow. Good. How are they? When it comes to analyzing my daughter, I'm the last guy in the world who should hazard an opinion. <laughs> oh, Martin, put those files, all that junk on my desk in the senator's car. Yes, sir. It won't take but a moment. I got most of it packed up earlier when Mr. Calderwood said you'd want it. No, no, that's, that's about as good as I ever play. Well, you know it's slowing you down, don't you? What? It's that beard. Am I help you with that beard? <laughs> no, no, that's, that's Virginia's pride and joy. She says that makes me look real distinguished. Oh, yeah? It's like this beard gun I keep on me. You know, you can't be an honorable citizen in Texas without one. <laughs> <laughs> what are you grinning about? The two of us horsing around like old times. Those crazy days in college when we were rooming together. <laughs> Just getting drunk and chasing the chickies around, huh? You remember that ski lodge we were going to open? Oh, yeah, boy. We were going to be millionaires, wasn't we? <laughs> you know, that's one thing I miss about Texas down there. There's no skiing, but uh, me and Virginia's going to go up to Aspen. Uh, you ought to come up there and join us next month, you know? I'd like that. Hey, you two. Hi, sugar. Hello, Rudy. Hi, Virginia. How'd it go? Oh, I just... Got my tail beat off. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> so I gather you two like it in Texas. Yeah, well, you know, when you kept me from moving up in the office that time, I got pretty teed off about it, but I think you actually ended up doing me a favor. He's doing beautifully, in charge of all Daddy's affairs in the Southwest. It's about as much as I can handle, too, I'll tell you. And you know what made all the difference in the world in our marriage? I mean, when I quit trying to claw my way up the top and everything, I had some time to... Give this little girl some attention. You look pooped, and you're sweating like a hog. Why don't you go take a shower? <sighs> I guess you can see who runs the show around here, can't you? Well. How are you, Virginia? How long has it been? Six years. You're not losing your hair. <laughs> you haven't changed that much either. I heard about you and Julie. We're still friends. Better friends than when we were married. You don't know. You can't possibly imagine how delicious it is to see you again and to not want to drag you off into the bushes and have you make love to me. After all those years of tormenting you and chasing you as if my life depended on it. I managed to survive. What a sick, neurotic little creature I was. And how lovely to be close to you and to feel nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm glad. Hi, come in. Just what is so important to drag me out of bed at one o'clock in the morning? Plenty, come on. Why don't you make yourself a drink? All right. You, 
uh, keeping busy? <laughs> now, that is the understatement of the week. You having any trouble finding time to keep up with DC's affairs? Now, what is that supposed to mean? Those three DC companies that went into the red and finally had to be sold off. What about them? Shopping malls in Kansas. Plastics factory in California. A machine tool outfit in Oregon. Right. Different industries, different locations, absolutely no similarity in business conditions, yet all three began to hit the skids at the same time. So? I dig into these files and what it looks like to me is a pattern. That's a series of bad breaks. The shopping center boys are on the verge of picking up a prime piece of real estate. Somebody else steps in and grabs it. Plastics factory plans to open a new plant. Somebody else beats them to the punch. It happens. You didn't consider the possibility that it was an inside job, someone who was passing out information? A spy in D.C.? How do you know there isn't? Did you investigate? Look, I am not a detective. You are D.C.'s counsel. And I was asleep at the switch, is that what you're implying? Yes. Now, I want a list of every person who has access to top-level confidential files. You get dossiers on them. You hire an outfit that knows the ropes in industrial espionage. Have you got someone in your office that can handle that? I know just the person. Porter. Well, fine. Well, get on it, Eddie. This is gonna turn into beer. Beers. Looks like yeah. No, no, that's a foam from the yeast. <laughs> you don't drink that. Mm. Smell it. Out of sight. You can get plastered just from the smell. It smells like yeah. Oh, here we go. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, go, baby. All right. We gotta find some nice dark place for this until it ferments. The beaker. The beaker. I got the caps. Okay, you do the rest, I'll cap. Okay. There it is. Look at that. Milwaukee, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Martindale will be giving her annual tea for the seniors at our home on Friday at 5. Oh, and the Glee Club is still in need of sopranos. So some of you younger fellows, whose voices are still up there, come on. Let's show some of that old St. Timothy's spirit and...
Jordish. You've had quite a spectacular record since you came to St. Timothy's. Only this time, you really surpassed yourself. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I will give you credit for owning up to your guilt in initiating this escapade. At least one of St. Timothy's precepts seems to have gotten through to you. When you're caught in the wrong, don't try to weasel out of it. Stand up and take your punishment. Yes, sir. For the next month, every minute you have free, after classes in football, will be occupied by hard labor. Something else I'd like you to do for me. Half a ton of sheep manure. My husband gave it to me for my birthday. Would you mind spreading some around my roses? Yes, ma'am. Wesley, when you're finished out here, why don't you wash up and then come inside? There's some things I want done in the attic. Yes, Miss Martindale. Mrs. Martindale? Yes? Where do you want this? Oh, just um, put it over there with the rest of the junk I'm throwing away. Wesley, what do you think about that trunk, huh? You want it down? Please. Oh, oh, dear. Your trousers, what a pity. Well, come on, let me have them. I'll fix them for you. That's okay, Mrs. Martindale. I mean, thanks just the same. Got an old sewing box up here somewhere. Ah. There it is. I got it. Come on now. Let's have them. You don't expect me to sew them while you're still wearing them, do you? No, ma'am. Well, then. That's okay. I mean, don't worry about it. Wesley, if it's any comfort to you, I can assure you that this is not the first time I have seen an undressed male. Hmm? Wow, it's getting late. Is it okay if I go now? Excuse me, I mean, I'm supposed to meet with my math tutor. 